Hello, I'm Kathleen Hall, and this is The Way I See It. Hello, my name is Ken Pierre, and this is The Way I See It. Hello, it's um, Women's History Month. February was Black History Month, and this is Women's History Month. So uh, we wanted to start out by uh, talking about a woman who's uh, close to my heart. Her name is Dr. Alice Paul. You may not know who she is, but we tried to get the Equal Rights Amendment ratified again in the state of Georgia. Uh, it's only been, you know, since 1924 since she wrote it. So we're not any bit behind here in, in Yorya, as friends would say, or Georgia. But we'll try again next year. But Alice wrote it, and all it says is that uh, women have the right, you know, to equal protection under the Constitution. I don't know why it's so hard to get it passed, but it is. And so what I decided to do was I always knew, I, I was a big ERA proponent and did all these things with it, but I didn't know anything about her. So I picked up a biography a couple, uh, two months ago and started reading about her. And it, what these women went through just for the right to vote, it's just unbelievable. Um, I found out that, you know, these women were arrested and beaten and sent to prison and force fed. They put tubes down their throat because they would go on hunger strikes. Everything they did was peaceful. And um, at one point, the night of terror is what they call it, the um, guards and everything got so frustrated because the women were so calm and peaceful and loving and were praying and singing um, that they um, put roaches and parts of rodents and rats and uh, maggots in their food. So even when they force fed them, she, they fed them filth and they made them go to the bathroom in front of the guards, the male guards. I mean, it was just humiliating, awful. And this would have been right about 1916, 1917. Um, and, uh, and the 19th Amendment, which is the voting rights, voting rights. Was, was passed, you know, in the next couple years. But this woman was uh, a Quaker, which Susan B. Anthony was a Quaker, which were the beginnings of the women's movement uh, at the very beginning. Legend. And, yeah. And, and it's interesting that they had, the, the Quakers had this, they were big, I know you know this, an abolition era. Absolutely. They were the ones, uh, whether it was Harriet Tubman or all them, they offered the homes, they offered the money, the support of the food. The Quakers were amazingly big in the whole social justice movement of this country. So anyway, she was, she was from a privileged family. She got a doctorate back then, women wow. who got a doctorate. But she committed her whole life. I mean, her entire life, every moment of her life, every day of her life, she never even married, had children, to, uh, to women's suffrage for, for the right to vote and then for the Equal Rights Amendment. And it was never passed, still hasn't. She's dead. But I think, to me, it's Alice Paul, but it's also the symbol of all of these women that came together, a lot of them three, four, five kids, a lot of them were nursing, a lot of them, they sacrificed so much when they got sent to prison and to jail each time. And again, no matter what they did to them, they responded with kindness and gentleness. So, and I know that with Women's History Month, you have, I, I with your reverent respect for women, you have to have maybe uh, at least one, because you have so many, but time is limited. I talk about time. so many, but I don't talk about Dr. Hall. And the reverent respect that I have for Dr. Hall, and she comes and she... He's not supposed to say this. I knew it. I knew it. I, and I told her that I had something to say. So I feel like she doesn't... You give, your, you give flowers and roses to people while, while they're breathing. And she goes and... You see, we're talking about someone that's not even alive anymore. And I feel like... So we went to cross... Well, we didn't go... We went to Cross Keys, but not yesterday. We went to South Atlanta High School. That's right. And Dr. Hall has a foundation called the, Doc, the Duke's Foundation mm -hmm. and she how long how long have you been running this foundation I haven't been running it well uh, Horace runs it Horace runs it well you helped him start it right start, right long time ago so long time ago. so how many years about 12 15 I don't know now this month belongs to her as well like she is a advocate uh activist I champion, I love this woman. Like, she is the, you have to, you have to, I have to give this to you. You, you changed my life. You don't know me for real. I love you so much. And I feel like this has to be out in the world. And, I mean, I don't know if we're going to edit this part. We're out. not, we're not. Okay. He's in charge of editing. We're so not editing. No problem. 
Oh my goodness. But these women inspired me. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, it's like Mother Teresa said, we can do no great things, only small things with great love. And I truly believe somebody like Alice Paul, someone that that I am, she's dead, but I am alive. And I have the responsibility, all of us do, to carry on these legacies. Instead of reading about people like they're dead and turn the chapter, their life, I really believe this, you know I do, was to inspire us. It's like Martin Luther King Jr., any of these people, Gandhi, I think that they would be sick to death if they thought we were honoring statues and honoring them in the past, no. don't you think? It's their legacy. It's their legacy. It has to continue on. I agree. And you embody that. And I remember we had, we had a conversation that us being bored, we're the greatest um, species, I guess, or, or generation that we were, were known. Like, say, so I'm the greatest out of my family because I was born, you know, all the genes, what, all what the What we say is, yeah, you are the highest and best accumulation of all of your ancestors. The diseases, the death, the wars, the black plague, whatever happened, you are the highest expression of your gene pool because you're alive today. You are. And you taught me that. Yeah. And, and I just you have carry to all that with you and that promise. Bounce it back to you because you're you're a walking legend to me. Anyway, we may <laughs> have this happen. out if I could figure out how to edit, it's but he knows how to edit. See, this is a problem I hadn't hadn't been posed before today. Definitely being posted. Mm -hmm. So anyway, back to Alice. Um, and, and, so and all many, women. And, yeah, and all, all women, but, you know, find out about her. Because, and again, it's not about a dead body and setting somebody who's been. It, it's her legacy. And also, what I realize is we're trying to get the Equal Rights Amendment passed again. Passed again. Is we can learn strategies, whether mm. it's, I'm reading also a biography right now mm. on Martin Luther King Jr. And if you look at the strategy that he did in... Uh, Montgomery and at Dexter when he was there. When you look at what he did in Albany, each strategy moved according to the situation. Yeah. So with what we're doing in human and civil rights right now, it's pretty cool to study all of these people that you think are, are just, just past old history. people. Yeah, and, and things that happened in the past. History repeats itself, so there are valuable lessons in these biographies. So, as we end, yes, sir, this is... Ken I'm Pierre. I'm Ken Pierre. This is the way that I see it. And I'm Kathleen Hall. Thanks for joining us today. This is the way I see it. Have a great day and a weekend. <laughs>